Hello, I'm Professor David Rothery and I wrote a very short introduction to planets. Now I'm a geologist really, and you might think, well, surely planets are seen through telescopes as little fuzzy dots. It's great fun to look at planets through telescopes, but for me, I like to see them close up from spacecraft in orbit or things that have landed. And from orbit, you can get a very good view of, of a landscape of a planet. And I used to do that on the Earth, using satellites around the Earth to look at rock formations on the ground. But now I'm doing it on other planets. And there's such variety out there, not just among the planets, but among their moons. Uh, there are dozens of large moons going around Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune with an amazing variety of landscapes and geological processes like volcanic eruptions and faulting and erosion. Uh, one uh, satellite, Titan, the satellite of Saturn, has rainfall of methane, rivers of methane and seas of methane. It's an incredible place. Um, the planet that is intriguing me most at the moment is one that doesn't seem to have the right composition and that's Mercury. Now we know what planets are made of. Here's a bit of a meteorite. This fell to Earth and it's got a grey area which is nickel and iron, mostly iron, and a yellowish green area which is rock. It's a silicate mineral. And planets are made, or the planets near the Sun at least, are made of a mixture of, of metal and, and rock. And we know what proportions these should be and from studying meteorites and from the solar spectrum, the way Sun emits sunlight. Uh, you can measure absorption lines which show relative abundances of different elements. And the Earth has a relatively small rocky core that's about a quarter of the Earth's radius. Most of it, the mantle and the crust, is made of, of these silicate minerals. Go to Mercury, its core is far too big relative to the amount of rock that's around it. Now, how the heck did that happen? Well, you can strip away the rocky outer part of the planet if you have a giant impact, something really big hits it and blasts the outer layer away. Or perhaps Mercury, if it formed as close to the Sun as we now see it, maybe the rocky layer got burned away somehow. Um, and both those models would seem sensible, except we now have a mission orbiting Mercury, a NASA spacecraft called Messenger, and it's measured the sulphur on Mercury's surface, and there's far too much sulphur there, not just sulphur, other elements which, like sulphur, are volatile and would be easily lost to space, especially in hot or violent processes. So, if Mercury is rich in these volatile elements, that just doesn't fit with Mercury's violent birth to strip away the rocky material. So really, we haven't a clue how Mercury formed. It's a real mystery. We may not crack it with a NASA mission. There's a European mission called Bepi Colombo that I'm working on, which will get into orbit around Mercury in 2024. And maybe that will answer the questions. But that's the beauty of planets. There's so many questions, and it's so many things I think they can teach us about how our own planet works.